Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Misha, Misha Chertkov, and I'm uh, telling, I'll be telling you about graphical models of pandemic. Also, I will be mentioning uh, agent-based models. Uh, so I'm on applied mass uh, side of the aisle and um, uh, let's go on. So that's my kind of roadmap of activities, which we uh, started uh, well with pandemics, uh, basically. And uh, what I'll be telling you about is based on those two papers, which are available in archive. And only uh, entry, uh, some, uh, some portions of uh, this roadmap uh, is covered. And specifically, uh, I'll be talking about inference and, uh, uh, well, uh, prediction and prevention of, of pandemics. Uh, there are many other aspects which we are planning to go ahead. And one uh, reason for me to talk here is maybe to look for uh, collaborators. Uh, it's all started uh, with data, and we got quite a lot of data on how pandemic spread. So there are all kinds of biological, epidemiological, geographic, environment, mobility, which is very important what we are doing, etc. data. Uh, I don't mean to read this uh, table literally, uh, but I wanted to emphasize that uh, uh, it's important new ingredient for models like myself uh, uh, to, to start thinking and you, uh, or for that matter, start a new projects uh, to model pandemic. And on a, on a level of modeling, we uh, talk about uh, very different levels of uh, resolution uh, and very different sources of information, in particular from data, which I mentioned, and uh, different expertises, which are certainly needed. Uh, my uh, position today for the purpose of this talk will be somewhere uh, kind of in the middle, in the sense that uh, we'll be talking about the geographical maps and uh, ge geographs, how we call them. I'll not be discussing a uh, uh, very uh, aggregated model, what we call compartmental models, even though, though the, those were very significant uh, first step in modeling pandemic in general, not only COVID. And by the way, everything which I'll be talking about is uh, generalizable to other, other pandemics, other situations, actually not only um, uh, viral, but also social. Uh, so I'll be mainly discussing what we're calling graphical models, but also we'll be mentioning agent-based. So that's another diagram which basically put scales into, into the play. Uh, so we are mainly interested in these projects on a neighborhood scale, maybe a city like Tucson, or maybe county. But of course, uh, this modeling uh, or kind of paradigm extends to different scales. Uh, we are... Uh, predicting uh, what will happen if uh, there is an injection and infection in a particular city, for example, through a uh, um, super spreader, and what will happen projecting now, what will happen um, two, three weeks from now. Uh, we, of course, also mean not only to uh, predict, but also to prevent. And in the first place, I mentioned data, we want to learn uh, parameters in our model. So all of that is one-to-one -one umbrella. Uh, uh, very high resolution uh, models are named, uh, are, are known under the name of agent based models. Before pandemic started, we had quite a lot of expertise on that in the world, but uh, very few of those, actually only one was uh, in open source. Now you see the list of ABMs, uh, that's how we call agent based models, which are now all uh, pretty much open source and we can all play with them and extend them. Uh, they account for different effects like masking, uh, quarantining, uh, etc. And that's uh, ongoing work, which is very exciting and very timely, very important. Now, um, uh, we are also developing agent based model software. Uh, we are not yet public, but we are heading towards that. And actually, uh, uh, well, in a day or two, we'll put a paper about that on archive. Um, uh, well, uh, features of agent-based models, they're basically the working horse of epidemiology. They are resolving individual people. We are talking about city of Seattle, of Seattle for example, 700,000 uh, people. So 700 uh, agents, uh, 100,000 agents. Uh, so it's extremely heavy. Uh, you cannot uh, 
model uh, and you cannot uh, prevent uh, disease resolution. So you need to have reduced models. And that's what, what I'll, I'll start talking about very soon. Uh, graphical models is one way of doing this uh, cost graining model reduction. So it's macroscopic as opposed to uh, ABMs, which, are, which were microscopic. Uh, they're supposed to be efficient, they're probabilistic. So they, they count, they are not answering question affirmatively, but giving you estimations of probabilities, and they're data-driven. Um, various inputs uh, and uh, various questions you can ask, in particular, what is the probability if infection, injection of infection happened to have it spread? Uh, here I'll put a very schematic slide, and it's actually based on a paper which is uh, a very famous, very well known, uh, but not in epidemiology, in the computer science, and that paper which uh, was discussing a spread of, uh, well, misinformation or information uh, through internet. Imagine, so now I'm putting it in a little bit with epidemiological, epidemiological swing. Imagine that I have this grid and each node in the grid represents a neighborhood. So infected Y neighborhood at moment of time zero and red is infected. So rule of the game is that uh, I stay infected only for one uh, step and then I become black. Black means um, removed and otherwise if I'm blue, I'm uh, um, uh, susceptible. Uh, so it, uh, this, um, it's a probabilistic model. It basically resolves uh, through connections possible spread. And you end up with a particular sample, which is uh, two color, black and blue. And that's uh, a sample, which means that there is a certain probability of this to happen, depending on the initial infection. And you want to answer a question, what, uh, what is the most probable configuration? Or what is the probability of some particular infection? And that's, uh, if I map to the city of Seattle, it's an illustration of how this type of model would work. So parameters now characterizing these probabilities between of infection between neighbors, you need to learn, extract from data. I'm putting it all on the rack. I'm showing you how I started. Suppose I have infection here, and that's where I end up is a number of steps. So one particular step intermediate. You see that uh, black is quite spread, but not uniformly. And that's, um, that's what we want to study. So model which describes this final state uh, happened to be a model which is known on the statistical side or also physics side and the name of Ising model. So it's not exactly the same. It's a graph which is a graph of this connection between different neighborhoods. Uh, so those J's represent strengths of interaction, how often people travel and how is big, how serious significant travel. H is a local bias, is how much you uh, you protect it, how much you're masking, what is the, what is the policy, etc. So now uh, you can ask questions like, uh, like I mentioned before, what is the probability that infection spreads, let's say half of city of Seattle in three weeks after this initial infection is, is basically infected, initial infection uh, injection. A lot of uh, different questions, a lot of conclusions you can draw. You can see that you basically very often in this densely populated city goes from either everybody got infected or nobody. So there is a sharp transition, what is called an applied mass physics uh, phase transition. You depend very much on data. So data is how you calibrate your model. And you can resolve it not only in a city level, you can go to Wisconsin, for example, which is much more rural in comparison with uh, West Coast. Uh, again, different questions, but let me now jump to what you can do prevention-wise. You can put this uh, graphical models in this prevention framework. And in the prevention framework, you're basically asking questions like how I can change, how I can introduce, uh, well, reinforce, and if I need to enforce a mandate, I mean, mask mandate, if, if I want to maybe uh, limit traffic. Uh, think about it a little bit abstractly as this polytope in the space of characteristics. And I'm, uh, if I'm within this polytope, I'm green, I'm good. If I'm outside, I'm bad. And then I need to project myself back to this polytope. This is a type of mathematical formulation which you have for this prevention problem. So we play with that. We, are, we care about this, uh, developing methodology. Methodology should be efficient. 
And that's what we are testing. So again, methodology, but we of course want to be practical and projected to, to, to real problems, to real, uh, well, for example, the city of Seattle. Uh, quite a lot of stuff work in progress. I would been telling you a little bit about inference, didn't tell you much about learning and uh, overall modeling pipeline from data to high resolution and to low resolution. That's uh, what is ahead of us. This is a team, not only from, um, uh, from Tucson, also from San Diego, uh, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Misha, that was great. Um, as a reminder to all of our audience members, please remember to share your questions either in the chat or hang on to them for our moderated Q&A session at the end of the presentations. Um, Florence will uh, collect everyone's questions and, and we'll, we'll talk about them at the conclusion of today's webinar. Next, I'd like to welcome Amanda Leggett, who's coming to us from the University of Michigan.